Hello everybody, welcome to another Comic Source Comic Boom collaboration. Uh, we're here to talk about Claire number four. This is another of uh, the best jacket titles from Scott Snyder and various collaborators. Uh, this is the one that he does with artist Francis Manipole, who handles the art and the colors for Clear. And uh, I, I, man, I thought this was fantastic. This book just keeps getting better and better. Uh, I've talked in the past about these best jacket press titles, you know, including Noctera, and it's it's tough for me to pick a favorite because whichever one I read last is, is sort of my, my favorite. That's sort of changed for me now that Clear Number Four has has come out. Really started with probably issue number three of Clear. Th this clearly, see what I did there? This one clearly has <laughs> taken the lead uh, yeah. as my favorite of the best jacket titles. It is fantastic. Uh, and we'll get into the details of of why that is and and uh, and just how awesome issue number four is. Uh, what did you think, Rocky? Uh, I'm I'm inclined to agree with you. I've uh, Night of the Ghoul number four, which we'll be reviewing as well. I I thought was whetted my appetite as well. I thought it got better. It was funny because uh, the We Are Demons started off out of the gate as my favorite out of uh, the Snyder's uh, Comicsology comics. But Clear is taking the lead, uh, uh, particularly with this issue in terms of where it might be going. Or uh, I'm not sure. I mean, this 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 doesn't end the series. It's uh, this is this sort of this particular issue ends on a cliffhanger. But if he, if he nails the landing, and I suspect he will, because uh, I, I felt he nailed the landing on We Are Demons uh, issue three. So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm really I'm really enjoying this. And and I got to tell you, like this is. Uh, I'm nitpicking here because all of them are good. Like clear, we are demons, oh, yeah. light of the ghouls. They're all good. I mean, this, to me, it's like choosing your favorite fruit. Well, I like apples and oranges. Well, what's my favorite? Well, it depends on you know what I mean. <laughs> on any yeah. given what? Sunday, right? I mean, it's like, right. yeah. So I mean, I, I'm really enjoying this, and kudos to Snyder, and 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 of course, in this case, his uh, collaboration with uh, Francis Manipal. It, he really nails this issue. Yeah, it's Scott said on social media the other day that he feels like this is the best work that he's done, and. In a long time, maybe ever, I'm inclined to agree with that. I've been saying that for a while, um, you know, and we can speculate on on you know what the reasons for that is. It's these are worlds that he creates that he owns. He doesn't have the editorial restrictions. Oh, you can't use that character. You can't make that change. You can't do. That. He can do whatever he wants, right? Like we talked about that a lot uh, when we reviewed the first couple of issues of, of We Have Demons that he's doing with uh, with Greg Capullo. So. Yeah, I, t I tend to agree. I think this is the best work that Scott's ever done. Um, and maybe the best work Francis Manipole's ever done. I don't know that I've, I've seen every issue that, that Francis has drawn, but my God, the, the color work that he does uh, to, to highlight his line work in this issue yeah. is just fantastic. From the glowing cigarette to... Um, well, those eyes, those yellow, the, the eyes of yeah. the, the man with the yellow eyes, you yep. know, I mean, it just, it really, really pops off the page. Yeah. If you go one page further and you see as detective Sam Dunes is, um, he's confronting himself, you know, this guy, uh, on the yellow eyes, sorry, we're having some technical issues with comicsology. Everybody will, we'll reload it uh, in just a second here. But as Sam Dunes is, um, is confronting this guy with the yellow eyes, Who's look who looks like himself, just like we saw when he was at the Department of Connectivity, when he looked like the director of the Department of Connectivity. Um, you see there in those first few panels, there is a, it, it's not the sun. I don't think it's the sun. I think it's it's the moon that's actually back backlighting them. But I love the placement of that where Manipal puts it between them as they struggle um, so that he gets to do them in, in silhouette. And throughout throughout their fight, yeah, you just see the lighting and the uh, choices he makes that help set the mood, right? This is, remember, a crime noir story, at, you know, a pulp detective story at its core. Yes, it's set in a world where technology is starting to isolate us, where you can choose to uh, see the world through a certain veil, which is kind of like a skin. Hey, I want to live in the world where uh, the, everything looks like the Teletubbies, or I want to live in a world where everything looks like Star Wars, or I want to live in a world where everything looks like uh i don't know tiny tunes uh you can do that you can do that and it lets uh it lets uh, francis manipole cut loose and draw whatever you know whatever he feels like um but again sam dunes as a, as a detective as he's gone through trauma that we uh were told about last issue 
we know he chooses to live his life on clear, right, with a clear setting. That's not always the case. We find out in this issue that he, at one point, um, thought about using a, a skin that would show him the world as it existed if his son had not died in that tragic accident. And, you know, like he doesn't already feel guilty enough that his ex-wife supposedly killed herself in the first issue, commits suicide. Uh, and that's what sends him on the path of um, that he's on now with trying to figure out why did she kill herself? Did she really kill, kill herself? Who else was involved? Uh, and he gets a lot of answers to that in this particular issue uh, and then feels even guiltier about it, right? Because he finds out that his ex-wife discovered that that Sam Dunes was using a, a black veil, a black market veil, um, and she, you know, experienced it for herself. And was that something that, that led her to, her to her suicide or to her death? Uh, so I think there's even more guilt associated with Dunes now. Um, and he ends up throwing himself at the end, uh, ends up throwing himself off the same bridge that she committed suicide on. And what does that mean exactly? That's the cliffhanger that Rocky was, uh, was alluding to. So uh, just, just fantastic story. And I, I thought that there's one scene where Dunes shows up to, Figure, kind of figures things out, figures out where he needs to go to get answers and shows up there and it's a full page splash from Francis Manipal and when that hit, man, that, that that got me. I was like, hell yeah, that is a great page, that is a great story beat. Like, here we go, Dune's about to kick some ass. Um, and yeah, I thought, I thought it worked really, really well. And the other thing that I'll mention and then I'll shut up and let Rocky give his thoughts when we get the flashback, right, when Dunes goes there, he confronts these thugs, finds out that his uh, wife and her capacity as a, uh, somebody that worked for the Department of Connectivity showed up and tried that veil that Dunes uh, had illegally had made. The color work in that flashback, just about everything is black and white, except for the red hair of his ex-wife and the blue of the veil uh, in the syringe. I thought that it was very effective, very effective way to do a flashback. And it's just beautiful texture work from uh, from Francis Manipal. So, man, I cannot wait to read the next issue of this. Uh, yeah, it's it, this one, like I said, it clearly has become my favorite of the best jacket titles. So what are your thoughts, Rocky? Uh, well, you, you did a really good job sort of summarizing the larger world of Clear, about a world where you can we can all create, live in our, live in our own illusions, create our own veil. Uh, and uh, live within it. And the, but what really grounds this uh, series so well is the, the very human story of, of tragedy and loss of Sam Dunes and his, his ex-wife, uh, Kendra, uh, who they lost their son. And they lost their son uh, at a time when they were actually sort of playing around with the veil, when she was playing around with trying to create K Kendra herself, who works for the Department of Connectivity, tried to create a shared veil. Unfortunately, something went wrong while they were driving. And their son ended up getting killed. and But their son also told them a story or a joke. And the joke was about, about you, know, uh, you know, inmates in an asylum trying to escape a fire. And, and to escape the fire, they had to jump into the sea. But, uh, and somebody told him, quick, you got to escape the fire. You're running out of time. Well, this insane person took off his watch and threw the watch into the ocean and said, now I have all the time in the world. To... <laughs> I mean, that was a, it's a very bad joke. But that's what that's where the watch comes in, because one of the center centerpieces of this storyline is Kendra dies and leaves her husband this watch. And and, uh, you know, and it's and at, at some point, the bad guy here, this guy with the yellow eyes, tells the joke that that uh, Sam knows that only him, he and his wife and a few others, a few other people actually know of that joke. And so what is it about the watch? Well, last issue, we had Sam look inside the watch that his wife left him. And there, there, was, a mic, there was a microchip inside that watch. And, you know, the watch is related to the joke that, that his son to told. And, and, and also, you know, it, and his wife basically ostensibly killed herself by ju ju jumping into the sea. And he also discovers that his wife discovered that found out that Sam himself did experiment one time with a black veil. 
And this guy named Elka gave Sam a black veil. And you said, like you said, he, he, he wanted to experience a world where his son was still alive. And when his wife, unbeknownst to Sam, his, his ex-wife Kendra saw that. So you got to wonder, is Kendra, did, did Kendra, Kendra got the same black veil from Elka and injected herself with it. Cause so, so she very clearly experienced the same black veil that Sam did. And so she knows that she knew that her ex-husband Sam was living, was experiencing a world where their son was still alive. And yet she's also trying to create a shared veil by going to this multi, to the wife of a multi-billionaire by, because they need a, he, she needs a more powerful server to sort of upload this massive shared veil. So she had an agenda here and a, and a purpose, but what exactly was it? And it seems to be all centered around this idea that it's all grounded in, in her love for her son and probably her love for Sam, her husband, because they broke up and separated following the death of their son. So this entire adventure, this this it appears that the motivation, perhaps creating a shared veil in the first place, is all centered around the loss of a son, the loss of a child. And that's what's so human about it and powerful about it. And it's taken place in a larger context of a world not unlike not, not too many decades ahead of us, I would imagine, where where everybody can create their own world, and it, it's a little bit tragic yet scary. I mean, do we really want to escape our losses? I, you know, there, you know, you know, he he lost his son, Kendra. You know, the irony is is that Sam Dunes here he loses his son, and he did experiment with a black veil and experienced the world where his son was still alive, but he came back to the clear. He came back to clarity. He he still insisted on being clear. Yet his wife maybe went the opposite way, but somehow she died. Somehow somebody murdered her, and we're not really sure why. And the big mystery is, and you alluded to it, is why at the end is he jumping into the sea? Just like his wife supposedly killed herself, but was likely murdered by, by jumping into the ocean. I'm wondering, why did he do that? What does that have to do with him being able to see, uh, to experience a veil? Is the maybe the microchip is is activated by water? I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm I love the questions I'm asking, but I'm I'm fascinated by this. And there, again, there's so many powerful themes here uh, of guilt, of loss, of tragedy, of uh, of a quest for the, to 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 regain the past and to embrace illusion versus living in reality. And oh, it's just it's very well done. So uh, again, I just I, I'm this is such a cliffhanger. I want to know what the hell is he doing jumping into the, 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 the sea here off this bridge like his wife did. What's that going to accomplish? But yet we know he's figured something out. Sam Dunas has figured something out here. But as a reader, I haven't figured out what it is yet. But something tells me that enough clues are in this story that I'm just not smart enough to put the pieces together yet. <laughs> yeah, I won't I won't be that harsh uh, on, on us for not figuring it out. I, I mean, I think that when we find out why, it will, it will make sense. But I'm not convinced that there's enough clues for us to, to figure it out. I mean, it, it has everything to do with that joke. I got to think throwing the watch in the water and given more time, he clearly has the watch on. It has the chip in it. He's jumping in the water. He says he's going to follow Kendra all the way down. Uh, I don't, I don't think that they would go so dark as to say, okay, Dunes is going to like if he wants to be reunited with his wife and son uh ex-wife and son and and you know he believes in an afterlife well this would be one way to do it right <laughs> um but i don't think that cider is going to go that dark there's got to be a logical uh explanation so yeah I, I i have no idea um but i keep going back to the fantastic art from manipul uh as the reason that this one just stands head and shoulders uh, at least for me uh, above uh well i shouldn't say head and shoulders but why it's my my favorite um because again, it, it's Francis knows he's going to be the one to color it, and knows the way to get the best out of his line work. Which again, I think, storytelling wise, you know, mood wise, being impactful on those moments, he gets to set all that up. And uh, yeah, see, there's that that full page splash of him on his motorcycle when he shows up at the mission. Um, yeah, this is fantastic. And again, this will be in print at some point from Dark Horse. And again, I, I've, I've read it. I own it on Comixology. You better believe I'm buying the print copies of this 100%. So, Absolutely. Uh, this, it, yeah, it's just fantastic. I, I literally cannot recommend this more than I do. It's my, my highest possible recommendation. You've got to read this. 
and I, yeah, again, the same question I have with uh, with We Have Demons about, hey, can you read the first issue of this and then not immediately want to go and read the others if they're available in Comixology? Especially if you get to that cliffhanger. Like, if somebody were to read, okay, I, I'm able to resist. I'm only buying the hard copies. I'll wait. You buy the hard copy of issue four and you read it and you know the digital copies of five and six or however you know far they are ahead in the digital are available. You can't resist. You cannot resist going and buying the next copy of the. I would go and, I mean, I, I have Amazon Prime, right? There's three ways you can get this currently. If you have Amazon Prime, you get it for free. If you have Comixology Unlimited, you get it for free. If you don't have either of those things, you can go to just the regular Amazon shopping site and you can pay $4.99 and buy it, a digital copy. I would pay $4.99 right now. I'd probably pay $10.99 right now to read issue number five. That's how much I want to know what the heck's happening uh, and, and know the answer to the, to the cliffhanger. So not that that's a not that that's a model. All you comic creators out there that listen to the show, that's not a that's not. It's not a model. I know I'm the exception. Don't set us up with big cliffhangers and then charge a ton for the next, the next issue. Don't do that. Uh, but yeah, I this is fantastic, definitely. Yeah, and just to reiterate what Snyder repeatedly is, he's a very good spokesperson for Comicsology. I mean, for the cost of what what seven ninety nine a month, you 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 you'd get all those comics for for free. Plus, not 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 only access to what Snyder is producing here with, with collaborating with different artists, but the entire the entire comicsology site i mean it's it's incredible so it's uh yeah there's you know. over there's over 40,000 books on there and yeah. you know everything from from daredevil to batman to um uh, just image titles you know return of the dark knight just mm -hmm. there's tons and tons of comics tons. on there yeah. um yeah and it's just a subscription model like rocky said 7.99 a month and you get all these comicsology originals you know it's and it's not just scott stuff there's plenty of other Chip Zdarsky has some stuff coming out there, um, as well as some some other creators. So yeah, you get tons of of new content, as well as a, a big library of, of back matter. So, uh, and and Comicsology, you can read it on your phone, you can read it on your tablet, you can read it on your desktop computer, your laptop, what have you. So, uh, yeah, anything else you want to add about this before we sign off, Rocky? I know it just it, it ends on a it ends on a great cliffhanger and it's uh, again it's detective crime noir future high tech grounded in hu human emotion and tragedy and loss I mean literally this is like this is like checking off all the boxes I mean yeah. uh, I mean I don't know what's what would be not to like uh, uh, in this series and the art is fantastic Francis Manipal man just uh, amazing and, and and like you said it was it's not just the the art the line work but it's it's the coloring and the shading uh, that he just nails it just really like pulls you in it's very very well done a highest yep. recommendation i agree with you yep agreed uh okay well that's gonna do it everybody uh don't forget if you're checking us out on youtube to make sure to subscribe to the channel uh it's comic space boom exclamation point so just do a search for that and give rocky's channel a subscription be sure you're reading the notification bell so we know uh, so you know when new content is coming out and give this video a like uh, if you haven't subscribed to the comic source, uh, you should do that as well. So you don't miss out on any of our audio only content. Just go to your favorite podcasting platform or app on your smart device, do a search for the comic source and subscribe. So we really appreciate the support and for you guys joining us as always. And we'll talk to you next time. Catch you later.